demonstration of how to tell if your free energy device is actually working or how if your improvements are making actually any improvement. What you need is a calibrated weight, a piece of string, and a stopwatch. And you need to be able to wrap the string around your wheel. Here I've made a little notch in the edge of the wheel. And I've also cut a guide channel all around the periphery of the wheel. What we're going to do is position the wheel close to, I'll turn it around so I can see myself here. We're still in the picture. We're going to position it close to the edge so that there's nothing that will interfere with the dropping of the weight. We're going to put the string in the groove and bring it around to a known starting position. And I'm going to start right there so that the string groove is at the bottom. The weight can fall without interference to the floor. And as soon as it does fall to the floor, I'm going to start the stopwatch and I'm going to time how long it takes for the wheel to stop turning. Okay. Now it doesn't matter what your weight is or where you start from as long as you do it the same way every time. So here's where I'm starting from. Here we go. Okay. The weight hit the floor. I started the stopwatch. Okay, that was 12, actually that was 12 seconds even. No, make that 12.8, 12.8. I recommend doing this test several times to make sure that you get an accurate average. So we'll run it one more time just to show you how easy it is. Set it up in exactly the same situation as before. Reset the stopwatch. And here we go. Bing. So when the weight hits the floor, I start the stopwatch. Bing. And that time it took 12.3 more time. The reason I do it when the weight hits the floor is because I can hear that. My reaction time to hearing that weight hit the floor is about the same every time. Okay, that time it took 11.8 seconds. So we would average those trials and then we would have an average time that it took for the wheel to run down. put in the sliding magnets and as you can see they slide quite well in their little tubes and so that's the only change I've made. Now we'll repeat our test. So let's put this on the edge of the table, put our string in place, wind it up, exactly the same place that we started from before. Table there. And reset the stopwatch. And here we go. Okay. So those magnets are sliding around in there. You can probably hear them. Bing. Okay, that was 8.4 seconds. Again. Yeah. 
Now, obviously, we're applying the same amount of energy to the system each time. The energy in this weight is mgh. That's right. And it doesn't change. Its height doesn't change. So the same amount of rate weight is the same amount of energy. So reset the stopwatch. And second trial. If I can get the stopwatch to reset. And that was only 4.5 seconds. Okay. Might have been a bad trial. So you always want to do these several times and take the average. Okay. So here we go. Reset. Start. And that was nine point three seconds. One more time. Set. And that was 9.1 seconds. Okay, so even if you throw out the really short run there, which may have been a statistical anomaly, you can see that adding the magnets actually subtracted energy from the system. The wheel doesn't turn as long with the magnets in place as it did before I added the magnets. Next, we'll see what happens with the stator magnets installed. the Mondrasek stator assemblies in the preferred Mondrasek positions of 6 o'clock and 12 o'clock. They're all repulsive and you can see that the rotor magnets fire quite well as they pass by these little stators. We don't have any latches installed so don't expect the magnets to stay in their positions. All we're testing now is if the addition of the stators has helped or hurt. So Back to our testing orientation and string, and we'll put it in position. Like that, and we'll reset the stopwatch. And oops, I don't want my nut to hit the table on the way down. Okay, here we go. Ready? Here we go. Okay, that was 12.4 seconds. 12.4 seconds. Okay, now what I've done is I've moved the stators to a more traditional magnet-assisted gravity wheel configuration at 7 and 1, and we'll repeat the test with the stators in this position. So, slot that weight, slot the 
string, lay it around. Whoops, came out of the slot. Reset and built. Almost runs, doesn't it? And that was twelve point seven seconds. So, it looks to me like we actually do have a little bit of an improvement from putting the stators in this position than from where they were up and down. Still no free energy, but it's tantalizing, isn't it? You can make these little improvements that tend to point in the correct direction, and it's enough to encourage you to keep working and keep fiddling. But it's an illusion. Don't get caught. You'll never reach the break-even point. But I'm going to still keep trying.